Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Happy Sunday everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, protect your systems as in your home system, for example, or your home PC in the form of laptop or desktop against fileless malware. Okay, so you may have heard about this fileless term. Okay, if you are um, already into cybersecurity as uh, working as a professional or aspiring to get into a career that would test your cybersecurity skills, or if you have uh, done certification in the form of CEH, uh, other certifications like uh, OC, sorry, OSCP, etc. You should be familiar with this term fileless. Okay. In this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, implement uh, a solution. Okay, that would either mitigate or completely protect your system against these fileless attacks. All right. So let's quickly start, guys. And before that, um, you may ask me what is fileless uh, malware here. Okay. So basically, file-based uh, malwares usually run on your hard disk and execute all those. Uh, uh, negative expressions as well as uh, uh, negative activities all right however this malware which is fileless execute directly on your um, memory as in your random access memory which is volatile in nature okay each and every time after restart everything uh, wipes off okay so that is why it is called as volatile memory and it this particular fileless malware it is usually executed directly on your memory as a result um, all your traditional antivirus programs fail to detect them in particular and hence it easily becomes um uh, the i mean easily becomes um uh, what do you call it uh it easily evades the detection basically okay that's what i want to say in exact terms okay so uh, basically these defense evasions happen in the form of these fileless attacks okay so i'm just going to quickly show you a combination of solutions that is you can implement on your personal laptop in particularly uh, like if you're uh if you feel that you're susceptible to all these uh, social engineering tricks in the form of uh, phishing emails, uh, other form of um, uh, tricks that you may uh, become prey of, hence, and if you you wanted to um, uh, find a way to prevent against these kinds of um, um, activities from uh, uh, from attackers, okay, and this particular solution is going to be very helpful for you, okay. So let's quickly start, guys. So I have some combination of solutions that you should be uh, inculcating on your personal device because, as you know. Um, all the enterprise organizations will have advanced security solutions which will definitely uh, uh, catch hold of these kind of uh, uh, attacks or risks coming in the form of these attacks. Okay, hence um, there is limited uh, uh, thing that we can do if you already have an advanced security solution in the form of EDR, XDR, NDR, etc. There's any endpoint detec uh, detection and response, next gen antivirus, next gen firewalls, and then HIPS host uh, intrusion prevention systems, and then network detection response, XDR, which is recently introduced, extended detection and response, okay, which Microsoft has provided, as well as there are a lot of security solutions which are advanced in nature, which can easily detect uh, any kind of uh, file list based attacks, okay, coming from, um, uh, coming from a bad actor, basically, okay. So it's obvious that on your personal device you won't have an EDR solution okay? because EDR solutions are licensed in nature. So you would have your Defender, Microsoft Defender's antivirus capability. However, um, I'm, I would not call it as a uh, as a next gen antivirus, but yeah, you, but definitely yeah, I, Microsoft Defender antivirus can be called as next gen antivirus. But again, it would it it would have its own limitation basically. Okay, so uh, so like I said. Even the antivirus at times uh, may not be able to fully uh, catch hold of fileless based attacks. Okay, um, and basically when I say gen, next gen antivirus, I'm just uh, telling you about uh, something called behavioral analysis and heuristic uh, based protection. Okay, uh, that detects uh, anomaly behavior. Okay, coming in the form of any uh, uh, threat actors like, for example, unsigned PowerShell scripts or uh, any other kind of macros which would have uh, malicious code. Okay, um, injected to a probably uh, VBA code, malicious VBA code injected into a Word document or your Microsoft Office applications, okay, and then uh, that performing uh, uh, intrusive action in the background, and then finally, our uh, next-gen antivirus in the form of Microsoft Defender antivirus, okay, uh, detecting uh, detecting that anomaly behavior, okay, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, preventing the uh, the script from doing something harm to that particular uh, to your uh, to your home PC, okay. So that in that sense, uh, Microsoft Defender antivirus can still protect your system. Okay, but but like I said, uh, again, uh, this particular antivirus, even the next gen antivirus, uh, is not a foolproof solution. Okay, so that is the reason organizations uh, deploy additional uh, capabilities in the form of uh, endpoint detection and response solution, which is called as Microsoft Defender for endpoint. Uh, if I'm talking about Microsoft's portfolio in security solution uh, framework, okay, and then you have uh, Microsoft also provides your extended detection and response capabilities. That is, uh, provide uh, giving additional security uh, uh, protection against all other uh, O365 and 365 products, okay, and even the cloud apps. So all these uh, protection collectively uh, is called as XDR, extended detection and response. 
okay uh, and not just with the endpoint and detection response and also you have uh, ndr capabilities okay um, as well as not ndr within the microsoft scope i'm telling about uh, the next gen firewalls it generally pro uh, provides you the ne uh, network detection response capabilities as well as uh, you have uh, something called hips host intrusion prevention system again it is a network security solution basically okay then you have uh, host intrusion detection system as well so all these collective features or collective solutions okay act as a, a, a protect protection okay layer of protection adds to the layer of protections within an organization or within an enterprise network but these solutions right you don't you not uh, have it on your uh, home pc or your personal uh, device hence why all these uh, solutions that i'm going to recommend now is what you need to have on your personal device okay because it, it may not be there by default so hence you have to um, manually implement them okay so let's quickly start guys firstly what i would um, suggest is to disable macros okay for all your office applications like excel powerpoint as well as your uh, microsoft word document so let's get started guys all you have to do is just open your word and just go to options okay and here under trust setter settings just open that go to macro settings and ensure that this option is selected guys for example if you select if the option or uh, reads enable all macros which is not recommended you can see here the implication of having this option enabled so it could basically um, run a malicious code okay uh, without your knowledge and as a result uh, it may turn out uh, to be uh, uh, something uh, uh, severe okay so hence if you check this option it is going to protect your computer guys really uh, from basically uh, you are you have partially mitigated the uh, the risk of threat coming in the form of fileless attack okay so so that's already checked here and then now you go to excel open the excel and just same go to options press center trust center settings go to macro settings and ensure the second option is uh, checked guys disable vba macros with notification okay uh, you can do this also okay if you want to allow any digitally signed macros coming in the form of uh, like if in case but it's usually recommended for enterprise organization guys so you you need not necessarily select this one you just can go with the second option disable macros uh, with or without notification anything of your choice okay and then again the last left is powerpoint I'll open powerpoint go to options trust center trust center settings and disable all macros with notification yeah it is fine guys ensure that this option is not enabled okay second option needs to be uh, enabled which is disable all macros and that's one part of the solution which you have enabled now which means we have partially mitigated okay the uh, risk coming in the form of fileless um, attacks okay and uh, we have potentially safeguarded our system now let's go to the other solutions guys so mostly these fileless based attacks happens in the form of unsigned partial scripts guys okay so which would have some malicious um, uh, code within it embedded within it and then that executes without our knowledge okay uh, let's say uh, in the form of a phishing email and that injection okay so basically it is called as code injection okay let's say um, let me open word okay and here when just opening this if we go to view right okay if i go to macros here there may be a malicious code okay which is unsigned okay which uh, which has um, some instructions uh, to do something uh, which uh, uh, they should not have done okay and uh, and without my knowledge i have executed it okay so in that case what happens is this particular uh, uh, that particular code okay would actually directly uh, get get loaded to my memory rather than uh, me saving it locally okay so that particular code okay i just opened it from my email and it's not going to save it guys it's, it's directly going to run it on my uh, machine directly uh, via my uh, random access memory okay as a result what happens is uh, my traditional antivirus okay, let's say i have my uh, defender antivirus just now if i just open i can show you right away here let's see query win defend okay you see my defender antivirus is running just now okay and now what happens is let's say uh, my defender antivirus could not catch it and that is my system uh, is actually infected with the fileless uh, code injection so so this is how guys this is what i was telling so you know what i should be doing in such a case because now i have um, disabled all macros and uh, that's one form of uh, protection i have already enabled but let's say it is not a, a macro in the form of a word document okay it's not a vbs uh, code macros uh, generally i refer to vba code um, attached within a word document or any other uh, uh, office application okay uh, so I have uh, put a protection against this uh, malicious macro in the form of VB code. However, what if it, it was a PowerShell script? So that is what I'm going to uh, implement now. So now let's say if I have um, gotten a malicious PowerShell script. So now what to do next? So all I have to do is just open this one here. Windows PowerShell. You have to open it as administrator basically. Okay. And now what I'm going to do is. Just a second guys. So the command is this one guys. Okay. Basically. If I just do a get 
execution policy you should get this option guys okay restricted okay so basically this means that my system uh, is not going to allow uh, execution of any malicious partial script guys so for uh, yeah, that is this is the simple explanation of what this uh, execution policy uh, uh, is currently that is set to in my PC. Okay, so basically you all you have to do is in case if it is showing as unrestricted to you, there are a lot of modes, guys, uh, which I can uh, talk about separately. But for now, um, in, we will just uh, stick to restricted and unrestricted, or uh, you can call it as bypass. Like if it is showing as bypass or unrestricted, it typically means that the PowerShell in, within your uh, which is legitimate Windows um, utility system utility that is going to allow execution of malicious codes or malicious scripts. However, after coming to know that it is set to restricted, which means that my op, uh, my Windows PowerShell is hardened to not allow the execution of malicious uh, PowerShell scripts, which is the most prominent way of um, uh, an attack happening in the form of, uh, uh, what do you call it? In case if there is a fileless attack, basically, okay, the only, the, the most common way or the most common technique that an attacker uh, could use is uh, execution uh, or uh, initial access via a malicious partial script. So here itself, we have put a, a, a block here, okay. So having this setting enabled, um, it's again, uh, some level of protection that I have put in on my system. Okay, so in order to make it uh, push this policy, all you have to do is just note this, note down this command, guys, set execution policy hyphen execution restricted. So once this is set, guys, I will just show you how it works so currently. You need to run as administrator to enable this option. Okay. Once you put this uh, security feature, guys, so you could actually prevent execution of malicious uh, partial scripts, basically. Okay. So another uh, feature that you could uh, enable is login. Okay. Set partial login. Actually, this is optional, guys. Okay. the second I think there are a few more switches that we have to uh, apply just hold on guys I will just it's I'm not remembering on top of my head what two switches are just two minutes so guys yeah like I said just going to execute this thing here so this is basically op um, optional guys this is basically particularly if you are um, having an organization of your own then this needs to be done if you have any SIAM solution okay so basically this particular thing right which is your get execution basically here this restriction is actually blocking execution of any malicious um, uh, scripts guys coming uh, in the form of partial and those uh, blocking right that is going to get locked okay within your system and in case if you are um, if, you, if you want the logging to happen and uh, let you know whether what kind of scripts got blocked and uh, what kind of scripts got allowed okay so this is uh, this particular setting can be enabled okay so basically we will be defining a switch at the end called as true that is going to log the uh, blocking of script executions. Okay, so let me give a tab here. See if it is coming. Okay, then I'm just going to specify dollar guys. See if it works. Okay, stelling uh, log script block execution. So hold on guys, maybe I'm doing it wrong here. Let me type the command manually here again. Maybe it's case sensitive, which is not the case. Referring to the Microsoft documentation, okay. okay, log script log execution. Yes, so let me execute this command, see if it works. Okay, it's not working, guys. Hmm. something is wrong basically it's actually optional guys like it's not a security uh, feature here which you're doing it's just we're enabling logging guys it's optional you may do it if you're interested to do but however um command seems to be failing so yeah, i need to work on this probably we'll make a separate video on this topic because it's not really security measure that we're taking here so it's not going to block anything it's basically logging it okay but i'm eager to fix this error okay because the video is going lengthy uh, we're just going away from the exact motto of the video and so I will uh, try to figure out why this is failing because it says as there is no C, uh, commandlet available um, as in the get, get function is not getting executed okay for example if I do like this you will see if I select tab right keep pressing tab there, is, there are a lot of uh, functions coming as in the commandlet however this commandlet is not available even the set one is not working hence there is some issue however I will try to correct it uh, separately 
we did it separately it's not the exact uh, mode of this video and so one feature we, which we have already enabled which is your execution policy over here which is set to restricted which is uh, i mean it's going to uh, protect your pc against execution of uh, malicious partial codes or scripts okay and another uh, restriction that you can do is uh, constrained language okay so for that again there is a, uh, a simple partial command okay and for that all you have to do is uh, before that you have to log in as an administrator guys okay let me quickly do that windows partial and i'm just going to quickly uh, run it as an administrator here okay close this up here basically this one what it does is it actually limits the capabilities of partial guys in other words uh, so basically uh, all those actions right even if you're running it as administrator some level of tasks that requires uh, more privileges okay so some kind of um, elevation of uh, uh, permissions that are required for performing certain tasks would be limited with this particular restriction enabled okay so all you have to do is just uh, again this is a command guys that we need to execute execution context you see yeah I just did a tab guys and it came and if i just do the session here session state that's automatically applying guys and then again if i do a tab here language mode that is automatically coming again and then if i do an open quotes if i do a tab okay it's not coming probably i'll tap it manually guys constrained do a tab here still not coming so i will have to type it manually guys apologies constrained then language and that's it guys that this again this restriction is also applied now so again this is another security feature guys that we need to enable okay which we have already done here okay and um, so with this so with these restrictions another thing that you can do is directly go to powershell right click okay and then just do an open file location okay and then for both these things x86 as well as powershell just what you have to do is go to properties go to security okay and then under security um any account that is not related to you okay uh, in case if there are more um, accounts that you have okay basically apart from your account if you have any other account that you use okay uh, where you can restrict the permissions here for example if there was a test user here all you have to do is go go to edit okay for example this particular account here what i would be doing personally is um currently not able to do anything here let me see if i'm able to modify something here so for example this is my account change okay. basically because these are my own accounts i'm not able to do anything so let's do one thing here and create account here okay basically my intention to tell you is like any account that it's not um it's not native to you okay, if you are unaware of any other accounts okay so apart from any non-administrative account okay just remove this full control modify write permissions basically okay just uh just give right uh, just give read permissions alone okay not give full control permissions basically we are uh, we need to remove the permissions the full control modify read and execute etc write permissions so only give the um read permissions to those non-administrative accounts um which uh would uh, uh perhaps if they have full permissions okay uh those can actually uh, uh act as a probably insider threat and uh it and uh, those accounts can be used uh for uh for any of these uh actions okay and uh i mean for uh for a bad outcome okay so that's why limiting the permissions after that okay so this is uh, you can call as access control okay controlling the access okay of uh, any non-administrative accounts okay uh and this is particularly applicable in case of a enterprise network or an uh, or this would particularly apply to organizations for me if i see here it's all both the accounts are belong to me so i don't have any other account to uh uh revoke permissions here okay so i basically want to tell in case if there are any other non-administrative accounts okay just in case uh in your home if you have um i mean uh let's say if you are if you've uh and basically it's uh absolutely not applicable guys okay in case if you have created just for your own learning purpose you can create a separate account and revoke the permissions which i can show you just now but it uh i don't think that is necessary because you you should be able to um uh, get hold of what i'm trying to say just revoke revoking the permissions on any non administrative accounts that's what i wanted to convey to you okay so that way it is actually um uh, restrict or uh, restricting any kind of uh, unauthorized um 
uh, actions okay uh, via an administrative account which will have full permissions okay so this is how uh, you uh, implement a comprehensive uh, strategic solution guys in preventing your home system or in case if uh, within you have a small medium business company where you don't have uh, or where you can't afford an EDR solution okay so these are the things or these are the ways to uh, that you should be going about okay preventing your uh, small medium business computers okay in case if you aren't able to uh, afford advanced security solutions so these practices which i have said are kind of best practices that you can uh, definitely look at and implement okay either in your personal pc or on your uh, uh, smb network small medium business network uh, network of uh, computers okay now if you found this video helpful please hit the important button guys and do not forget to subscribe to my channel for more useful technical videos like this so, uh, we'll meet in the next video guys until then stay safe eat healthy cheers bye Hey guys, so basically, Microsoft Defender Antivirus and Defender Exploit Guard can work together uh, to provide your computer the robust protection against these fileless um, attacks uh, via malwares. Okay, so Microsoft Defender Antivirus, right, uh, uses the uh, anti malware scanning interface, which is called as MSI, to detect and block the fileless malwares, guys, which often, as you know, leverages built in tools like PowerShell to execute its malicious code, okay, into the memory directly without writing the files into your hard disk. Okay, as well as this, uh, there is one more feature called Micro uh, Microsoft Defender Exploit Guard or uh, Exploit Protection, which adds an extra layer of protection, guys, by applying various mitigation strategies to help prevent uh, malwares from exploiting uh, known vulnerabilities uh, to gain access to your computer system. Okay, so this also includes protections against memory-based attacks, okay, and other uh, sophisticated techniques uh, employed by these fileless malwares. Okay. So by combining these tools, we can significantly enhance our defenses against these fileless malwares, guys. And also, uh, it includes other advanced threats as well, okay? So let's quickly get started, guys, further. Hello, everyone. Good evening. We're watching this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to implement uh, some of the device-level protection, uh, which will help your computer system uh, protect itself against fileless-based uh, attacks coming in the form of uh, fileless malware, okay? Which attackers employ, okay, using different uh, techniques. So in the last to last video, I did show you uh, some of the common strategies that you can implement in order to mitigate uh, the uh, fileless based attacks, okay, uh, which may harm your computer. However, in this video, I'm going to uh, show you in a more holistic way of how you can implement a combination of solutions that will protect your computer against these fileless attacks. So basically, in the previous video, it was all about configuration management, okay, uh, implementing some. Uh, system or device level configurations which if you employ it's going to uh, mitigate uh, fileless attacks okay partially however uh, there is still uh, space for improvement okay you still have a lot of options that you can uh, uh, inculcate within your computer particularly if you're using a, a laptop or a desktop however this also applies for enterprise uh, devices guys however enterprise we don't we're not uh, much uh, much bothered about an enterprise network guys this video is solely for uh, End, uh, end users basically okay and uh, the consumers you me um, and uh, home based users okay if you're looking to protect your computers against these fileless attacks which could be nefarious uh, so let's quickly start guys so this video is going to be uh, utilizing some of the uh, computers inbuilt uh, security features that are by default available you just have to enable them okay basically guys as you know the fileless based attacks usually happen uh, uh, via uh, malicious uh, execution of uh, probably your unsigned partial scripts or any VBA codes. So in the previous video, I showed you how to block all macros okay, that make it executed or uh, in the form of a code insertion to your uh, legitimate Windows uh, system processes like your um, uh, winword.exe, excel.exe, powerpoint.exe. Okay, however, that is one mitigation thing that you have already done, guys, which I showed you earlier. And also I had showed you how to restrict the execution of unsigned partial uh, scripts in the last last video as well. So now what we're doing is uh, this is like your additional layer of protection, guys. Okay, apart from those best practices or mitigations which you've already applied, uh, these are system level protection. Like for example, uh, since all the malicious codes get executed uh, or loaded on your memory directly, as in your uh, random access memory, uh, so it's important we uh, enable a security mechanism which frequently scans your memory. Okay, so that is what is called as real time protection, guys, within your Windows Defender antivirus uh, capability. Okay, so all you have to do is just go to Windows Security, guys. Okay. So this is one of your uh, primary goals to enable real-time protection which should uh, frequently scan your memory for any anomaly behavior coming in the form of uh, uh, loading of unsigned partial scripts okay which should allow an attacker to hook into your computer okay so all you have to do is open this and just go to manage settings here and you need to ensure that entire feature is selected okay particularly the real-time protection is what it's going to uh, help you with the memory scanning okay so you have to ensure if all these features are enabled guys tamper protection 
automatic sample submission, cloud delivered protection, or dev drive protection. However, these are irrelevant. The very first thing you need to enable is real time protection. Ensure it is on. And so this is one check covered. That is, you can see here location stops malware from installing or running on a device. Okay. And I can turn off the setting for a short time before it turns back on automatically. Okay. So basically, awesome. leave this on, guys. And this is your uh, antivirus real time protection, basically, which will keep on scanning your device for any anomaly behavior. Okay. So the next uh, important feature that you need to enable is memory integrity, which is called as uh, basically, I will, I will show you here. So it is um, core isolation. Yeah. So under core isolation, this is one of the security uh, features, guys, just talking about memory integrity, which would prevent attacks coming in the form of uh, malicious code insertion into your highly uh, secure processes, window, uh, Windows processes. So basically, uh, this applies, okay, to your uh, app based executions, okay, coming in the form of uh, unsigned partial script in injected into your, uh, let's say, Excel document or your Word document or your uh, PowerPoint document, okay. So that is what this particular uh, feature is going to protect you from, like execution of malicious code, which are inserted into your high security processes. Okay, even if it applies for your file list attacks as well, because the unsigned PowerShell script that I'm talking about, it is a malicious code basically. Okay, how it is getting uh, 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 executed, guys? It is via PowerShell.exe. Okay, so PowerShell.exe is a legitimate Windows process or utility. So th then, so if we enable this feature, okay, in case there is an unsigned partial script getting executed, this feature is coming into play and it's going to prevent your device um, from uh, the uh, negative uh, impact of executing of uh, executing of those uh, of that particular partial script, okay. And so just you have to enable this, ensure this is enabled. And here, the second one is kernel mode hardware enforced attack protection, okay. Again, it's going to prevent you uh, uh, your system from running harmful code, okay, within your kernel mode memory, okay. So this, leave this as enabled. Okay, you can see memory access protection. If you enable these two features, it means your memory access. Okay, it is protected. So these are this is the secondary feature, guys, that you need to enable. Okay, so to prevent, uh, protect your device from uh, file list, uh, based attacks. Okay, so that is second check that is covered. And then what you have is you have app and browser control, guys. Okay, here there is another important feature which I was talking about exploit guard. Okay, this again uh, uh, your uh, system level uh, security feature, guys. If you click on this. Here, what you see is you should you need to ensure that all these features are enabled, guys. Okay, uh, control flow guard, data execution prevention, and then uh, you can turn on this as well. Okay, and it requires you to restart uh, your device and uh, this one randomize memory location. Okay, and all these features let it be turned on. Okay, let it remain in on mode. Okay, and then um, you, if you go. If you want a more fine-tuned uh, uh, app-based protection, guys, like I said, right, malicious code gets inserted into your uh, uh, most utilized, uh, let's say, the insertion, that is, the malicious code can get inserted or injected into your uh, legitimate office applications, like, for example, Excel or WinWord or PowerPoint. Okay, how are you going to protect further, uh, protect those application, uh, I mean, coming, uh, the attacks coming in the form of your uh, legitimate uh, Windows applications, right? How are you going to protect the application itself using the program settings? So here, what you have to do is, you can define rules basically. Okay, uh, this is one way of uh, uh, reducing the attack surface, guys. Okay, for example, if you want to protect my Excel.exe, okay, from uh, uh, from uh, the from from, my, from from let's say malicious uh, code, it's going to get executed via Excel.exe. Okay, how am I going to protect my application itself, as in uh, Excel.exe itself? Okay, so that's what I'm going to define in this particular uh, rule, guys. Okay, within this program settings for Excel.exe. Here, what I'm going to do is particularly uh, concomitant to uh, file list based attacks, what I would suggest is enabling all these rules, which I'm just showing you. You can enable this one. Again, like I said, you can see prevents non-image backed executable code. Okay, so you have to check on this option, select on. Okay, if you want, you can, uh, uh, I, th I think you should not be enabling the uh, rest of the two boxes here. And now what you have to do is you can, you can check this one option here, code integrity guard. Okay, and you can turn this feature on and then control flow guard. You can turn this on as well. And then uh, data execution prevention. You can see prevents code from being run from uh, uh, data only memory pages. It's again referring to memory here. You can turn this feature on. Okay. And then uh, what else you can do? This one, force randomization for images. Okay. This is already enabled. So it's good here. So you can see here, you can enable this one again. Anything that is referring to memory here, guys. You have to enable anything uh, related to memory or uh, there is a reference to memory here. Okay. And then uh, you can enable this one. You can enable this one as well if you want and you can and if you see anything related to code you can enable okay so and then all you have to do is just click on apply 
and that's it guys so we have uh, defined 10 rules here okay for excel.exe so any uh, attacks or uh, triggers coming in the form of uh, code execution or code insertion or code injection okay it's, it's called as technique as per mito framework so basically this particular technique if it's getting involved uh, in the form of code injection okay to your uh, excel.exe and if excel uh, is supposedly uh, becoming susceptible to such kinds of uh, fileless attacks this particular uh, definement here that we have done under program settings for exploit protection is going to protect the excel.exe itself as in it's going to restrict the excel.exe or protect itself to uh, or uh, it's going to uh, restrain excel.exe from executing those malicious fileless uh, codes guys okay that is going to uh, get invoked or executed on memory itself or on memory itself or uh, if it's getting or if it's trying to load itself on uh, your uh, memory okay so this particular uh, implementation of uh, protection in the form of uh, rules that we have just assigned okay is going to protect again the excel.exe application itself okay so this is how you do it guys for rest of the applications also uh, application binary okay let's say we can see winward okay here you have powerpoint okay so we'll do the same okay we'll do the same for uh, powerpoint.exe also and this one like i said anything that we see uh, in reference to memory or code we just go ahead and enable it yeah. okay and then i just have to click on apply and restart so this is kind of additional layer of security guide that we are implementing okay we are just utilizing our own uh, system level uh, capabilities which uh, our uh, windows operating system is bundled with that is your uh, microsoft defender for uh, I mean, Microsoft Defender's antivirus capabilities as well as uh, these additional protection features like exploit protection, okay, which we are just uh, going through, okay. And you can see the WinWord is also there. You can do similar similar thing for your WinWord.exe as well, okay. And so this is all I wanted to show, guys, okay, and ensure all the. Uh, if you just go to virus and threat protection here, I just have to see green for all. Just a second. So all these features needs to be enabled, guys. This check mark, this check mark, right? Green color check mark or tick mark. Uh, you can call all these needs to be uh, in green okay so it means that all major features are turned on okay in case if you see any red mark it means uh, that needs an action okay warrants an action and uh, so that's all that i want to show guys so this is a holistic approach of uh, protecting your computer against uh, fileless uh, attacks coming in the form of fileless malware uh, via code insertion or code injection technique okay and uh, once you ensure all these things or, or all these checks are available already on your device means your system is almost uh, protected against these fileless attacks and for this video helpful please hit the upward button guys and don't forget to subscribe my channel for more useful videos like this and we'll meet in the next video guys and until then stay safe we'll reach your bye bye